Hi. So please introduce yourself. Uh, so we are biped and we are developing an obstacle detection system for blind and visually impaired people. So with this, uh, the blind guys are give, giving them vision. Uh, and what we are doing is that we are complement to the white cane, where the white cane has a limited range of one meter. We are able to bring it on 160, 170 degrees field of view up to 15 meters to help the people avoid obstacles. For that, we are playing sound to signal to the person where the obstacles are. That's awesome. Uh, do they get that as an audio feedback? Or how do they read this information? Yes, exactly. So, so we provide a bone connection headphones to the persons and they get a sound played in the three-dimensional space. So like you would have with the parking uh, system, uh, parking assist system of a car, you'd have a pip, 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 as the obstacle is coming close to the person. Could you customize that and have not so much beeping, but like um, something pleasurable, like a, kind of like a music or something? But it's totally readable for a blind person to understand obstacles. So in the end, the, the main challenge is to, to convey as much information as fast as possible. The, the reason why we, go, we went from the beep, beep, beep sound is that we can play on the, on the, on the pitch of the sound and on the, on the velocity of the sound. So this is enabling us to look, localize the, the obstacle in the 3D space and to know what kind of obstacle it is. So for example, we would have a different sound for, for a car or for a, for a pedestrian. So if the birds or the whales use it, the, and the, what do you call it, a bunch of animals use that, it, it's the standard, that's the way to go. Do they do beep beep also in nature? Like they do, yeah, that's what I mean. We are using uh, this as a, as a feedback to, to, get, uh, to get the information where you're using the camera. So it's like using the vision and translating the vision to sound. How about uh, what's happening behind here? So we have the cameras here, here is the battery. So we have uh, three hours of fully, uh, full autonomy. And then we have the computer, the embedded computer just here. Where did the sound come out? We're using a bone conditions, uh, condition headphones. Just Bluetooth? Yeah, Bluetooth. And uh, how good is this system here? Does it really catch everything? Using LiDAR, so uh, it's uh, just vision? It's a stereo vision base, and it works both uh, day and night, because we have also infrared in illumination. It's a 170 degrees field of view, so like the human eye, and up to 15 meters. How good does it work? Have some guys using it. So we, we did a 300, 300 uh, beta tests, and uh, now we are commercializing the device. And the thing that is, uh, I mean, the highlight of the feedback we get is that the, the people really love uh, when they have the silence because they know that they are in security. So if the person is walking towards an obstacle, it would have sound. But if there's nothing playing, he knows that there's no risk of collision, so he can rest rest easy and be uh, be at peace. Uh, when I look at your video, is it one of your beta testers yes. using it? And what is the feedback from, from him? Is he saying, is it like life changing? So, I mean, the, he's actually the one who gave the feedback uh, of, of him liking uh, having the sense of security. It's really like he enjoys a lot more going out for a walk when he has this compared to the white cane. Because with the white cane, you need to enter in collision with the obstacle to know about it. And in all of these demos, we see the persons avoiding the obstacle even before touching them with the white cane. So that's really the, the peace of mind and the, the stability you get from, uh, from having this uh, additional information. Uh, I don't know if it would be uh, surgically inserted into people, but I heard that the back of the tongue is very sensitive or something like that. You can maybe use it to like read information such as your 3D data. Maybe a, in a faster way or more high resolution than this audio beep beep or not? What do you think? That would be an approach. Uh, the, the thing is, we also have uh, GPS information to guide the person in the street. So we have both the beep beeps for the for the obstacle, but also the GPS in instruction to say, yeah, turn left at the, in five meters to help the, the people get uh, get to a new uh, new trajectory in the, in the street. 
Is it maybe possible they could wear special gloves, something else that gives them a feedback? Extra, something extra. So we'll get more resolution. We're actually uh, looking into integrating like uh, the vibration from the Apple Watch. That is, that is I mean, we can connect uh, to the Apple Watch and play by vibration in addition to the sound for, for extra, extra information. That's nice. Maybe you can have even more vibrators on the body somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the challenge with having vibrators is that uh, you need to have them, I mean, if you're we wearing a lot of clothes, like a winter coat, you're not getting all of this vibration, so it's, uh, it's a bit of a challenge. That's also why we have uh, this, uh, this form factor, and that's why we are using some. So here it says you're the winner. You win the, the competition, or what is this? This is a pitch battle among uh, the startups that are all here, and uh, the, my colleague Mael won the, this competition. Defending cool. like the, this company uh, amongst other startups in the health and green, uh, green tech technologies. Where are you based? In uh, Lausanne, Switzerland. Lausanne? Yeah. That's uh, beautiful. That's where, near where I live.